coming to you now from the famous Marquee Club in London. Tonight, Boston's Extreme play their debut London gig and there's not a spare ticket to be had for love nor money. It's completely sold out. The band are over to promote their highly acclaimed second album, Porno Graffiti, which they describe as a funked up fairy tale. Well, as I think you'll see tonight, it seems that Extreme's career is also turning out to be something of a dream come true. Whenever we're away from home, we seem to find out things are happening back home and uh, more than words is reaching top of the charts back home and hopefully we're going to come out here and work. Yeah, and earn our, unbelievable. earn our fans here. The band's been together five years, and to see it all happen now with the gold records that, that, that we're getting in America and the, the buzz in Europe, it's like it makes we're, it re we're ready for more it. more sweet. Yeah. Really. Absolutely. It's very sweet. Extreme formed in Boston in 1987. Their self-titled debut album, from which this track Mother is taken, was not an instant success with the fans, although it was acclaimed by critics and other bands such as Skid Row, Warrant and Motley Crue. So in what ways have Extreme progressed on porno graffiti? Between the first and second record, I think we've come a long way and matured as players, uh, individually and as a unit. Um, and the songwriting, everything, we, we just had more time to, to really develop the songs. And we, we were so ready with the songs when we went into the studio and everything went so smoothly, smoothly this time that um, it's just more happening. Which, uh, which also, it, we, uh, a lot of people are confused with the, the writing. They seem to think it's changed a lot. Our record was delayed a year and we had written like three quarters of porn graffiti before the first one even came out. So when we were touring the first record in the States touring, we were playing stuff off of porno and nobody knew what was going on, more than words, you know, the song porn graffiti. So by that time that we did do the record, we were so pumped and so excited and we had the material so tight from playing live that it just clicked. up fairy tale, whether it's a concept or not. Yeah, there's, we, we kind of like to call it a loose storyline, you know. Uh, we don't want to limit the audience's interpretation, so I'm not going to come in here and give you an Operation Mindcrime or, you know, or the wall and try to explain every integral part of the songs, because we feel that the songs alone can stand on their own. And if the people who want to get into the, the record and the themes of the record, there is that storyline for the, for the people. It's very but, so yeah. socially oriented kind of concept, you know, very everyday thing as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, it's, uh, give you a general thing, it's just a kid growing up in a decadent lifestyle and what he goes through, it's, it's kind of uh, an abnormal story, story about a normal kid. As our, what, what funk has to do with this band, you know, there's this, there's a growing trend in the past couple of years of the new hip funk bandwagon thing. And this band actually feels like we're not a part of that. You know, those bands are, are great, you know, I could name a few, 
that is happening, and that's great. But I, I, I feel that some of the European press has, has thrown us in there, with, with the you know, it's more uh, on the on the on the strength of just one video, and we're really not that. Our our funk comes in with the tradition, like the traditional funk, like the Aerosmith and the Led Zeppelin. That's the funk we get. Out. To be honest with you, what, what this band is about is, is not about a guitar hero type thing. You know, Eddie Van Halen wasn't, a, wasn't you know, an innovator, but that, without that band, he was a mere just Eddie. And same thing with Paige. When those guys split up, they sounded nothing like the band. And what we're trying to bring back here is the chemistry of a band. It's, it's a family type thing where if one of the guys leave, it isn't extreme anymore. Whether it's Paul, whether it's Pat, me, or Gary, it's just a... Thanks, dude. I love <laughs> it. You know what I mean? It's just like people focus too much on like the yeah. flashiness. Obviously. We do, you know, me and Gary, Gary's the lead singer and I'm the lead guitar player, so these guys lay back a little more. But without them, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't groove on what we do. And you know? also, just to add, stroke Nuno for a second, calling stroke Nuno, me, dude. just calling Nuno a guitar thing and selling him short because, uh, you know, his vision as far as writing and music, it goes beyond solos. And that's where I think, that's a, <laughs> no, I think, I think with the guitar hero, that worship, that label, you know, you got all these uh, Ingve heads, you know, going after his soul, and that's not what he's about. Well, you know? But the good thing about it is the press that I'm getting, I get to tell him to the not, press. to not, the press that I get guitar is to not do that, is to really, as a guitar, guitar player, you should listen to music as a musician, not just listening to complete technical stuff, because the things that are going to live on forever are songs, and that's what's going to live. And if you can, Chris, if you can do a good song and a decent solo, then you can have it all. You don't just have to be, you know, 30 seconds of a song, you got a whole other three minutes that you can create with, so don't be an idiot. Do the whole thing. Seeing I love you is not the words I want to hear from you. It's not that I want you not to say, but if you What's yeah. happening with battle, like not so much battles, but production nowadays, it's getting so good that songs are surviving on that. You know, even if even if it's not a much substance, production is, is saving the song. You know, you got your big snares and all sorts of like keyboards and vocals. So if it isn't a great song, at least, you know, it at, at least it's pleasing to the air. So what we, we try to do more than words, I think, is, is a little on the ballsy side. It's like when you go, I'm not comparing us to the Beatles, but if you go back to the production of like the Beatles, not very good. we we go back and listen and say, hey, wait, they were singing like a little out of key, and, they, and it did sound almost like not that good, but you don't remember it that way because the song was so powerful. So we attempted with our own type of, that type of attitude to try to see if we could really just capture 
you know, a beautiful song on tape with no frills, no thrills. And, you know. and as far as how we approached the video, it was the same way. Uh, you know, it was us coming out of practice. Obviously, these two guys mocking us because that's what they do in rehearsal. <laughs> but uh, it was very simple. And, and people, you know, people say it's a great video. Hopefully, it's because of the song, and it draws you into the song. Because there's nothing real visual about the video. I mean, it's just showing us a slow-moving yeah. camera. That was the whole thing about the black and white. Just, just don't even get caught Don't distract. Don't distract, and just yeah. like keep it simple and see if we can just get in the vibe. Of it. What the fans get from an extreme show is is uh, three dimensions. You get your uh, record, which is one dimensional. You get your videos, which is two dimensional. You get your live show, which is three dimensional. I don't think it compares to a record or a video. I think the band is a performance band. I think uh, I think in the 80s, most metal bands have lacked that live because I think they're too busy trying to reproduce a video or too busy trying to sound good. When in reality, I think. Uh, the human thing is what people want to see. They don't want to see the same video every night, the same show. They want they want to experience something that only they can have when they go home. Like either they were really they weren't on tonight, or they were on, or we, they saw something, or something sounded different. Yeah. I think that's what we try. To, we're very uh, you know human and without sounding corny, emotional when it comes to things. Sometimes you know. Yeah, and they, and they go home with something of their own. I mean, we leave we leave room in the set to jam, and there's uh, we we like to think that we get the crowd involved, but. Until tonight, we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. Get the fuck out of here. 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 Get the fuck out of here.